Let's do another bump map, but this time we're going to have more control over the kind of material and the way that it reflects light and the kind of light you have and all that stuff. So it's a little bit more complex, but not too bad. Now you know how to get the party started, right? First we're going to, well, we're going to, instead of rendering noise today, let's try a new one. Let's go to render <coughs> pattern, okay? Try some different patterns. If it has more grays and stuff and it's not just black and white, it works the best. Like if I do checkerboard, that's great. I can make a quick checkerboard if I need one for something, but for this one, checkerboard, Actually, it might be kind of cool. I don't know. It might hurt your eyes too. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying you can't use it, but I'm saying it, you might be, you might like the prettier effect if you use different ones. So try some different ones. Let me know what you find because there are some really, really awesome ones. Um, so I'm just going to pick, um, I'll go with sinus for this one. I like sinuses. Um, so you can change the X and the Y scale a little bit like those different clouds, if you remember those. It looks like, like sunglasses. I like that. And uh, I'm not going to go yellow and blue. I'm going to go... Red and blue, yeah, or like red and blue, yeah, that's even better. Okay, um, <clears throat> and then I'll keep it, play with the other things and see what you come up with, okay? Um, if you do something as oidal, and there are lots of other ones to choose from. It's really easy to render stuff quickly. Okay, so guess what? I need another map, so I'll make a new layer and call it Bump, all right? And uh, for this one, yeah, you can drag the white in there, but this is a little complex. There's still a channel available for transparency, even though you can't see any transparency. So whether you pull white over or not isn't as important as if you take the, the alphas out because this algorithm gets confused by the alphas. So you need to go to layer, transparency, remove alpha channel. All right, anywho, now you got a good bump map, okay? Um, let's go ahead and do your thing. You know how to do this part. Now, something about uh, text tool, you know how it makes that other layer? Okay, well, if you made your text nice and big, that layer might be bigger than this one, which is going to mess some things up when we merge it down. It's going to change the size of the layer. So that's a quick fix. First, let's merge it down. You know how to do that layer, merge down. But the next thing we need to do, this is important later, um, is layer to image size. So if there is some extra junk on the edge that confuses the bump map algorithm later, that'll crop it out and make sure that we're good. I don't know if you noticed that yellow dotted line at the bottom changed. See how it's not there? And then when I did the layer to image size, it showed back up. So that, that becomes important later. But for now, need to blur it, okay? The blurrier it is, the more gradual your map is. So do that how you want to do it. Um, I can still read it there, okay. <clears throat> there we go, got my map. So I'll poke them in the eyes, so it's visible. I'll click on the background so the background is ready. And now I'm going to do some weird stuff. I'm going to go to filters, light and shadow. Okay, I'm not going back to the basic bump maps down in map, okay? Even though I'm doing a map, I'm going to light and shadow, lighting effects. All right. Well, this dialog looks very different from your bump map one. And I encourage you to stay here for a while because there are a lot of different things to do. The most important one is to grab the bump map. So say enable bump map, and if you did everything okay with the layer to image size and removing the alpha channel, you will definitely see it in your options. If you missed one of those steps, it might not be there. All right? Um, you can change how high the bump map is here. In fact, I'm just going to sand that off a little bit. Um, and then try different curves if you want to, if you're looking for that. But uh, another th important thing that we're doing is, oh, yeah, the blue dot here is where the light is coming from. Okay, so it's kind of like I have a flashlight and I can shine the light from wherever I want it to shine, even dead center. Okay, and it's going to grab the light and cast shadows and change colors respectively depending on where the light is. All right, so if I put a light over here, um, then let's go ahead and you can change to point or directional light. Okay, you can change the color of the light, although be careful here because depending on the colors you have in your map back here, the color of the light might really be really boring. Um, so if you're going to play with light colors, create something gray next time when you render. That's important. Um, glowing is how glowy it is. So let's say I say 0.5 and you notice how the image is giving off its own light, which means the light that you did with the blue dot is not as important anymore. So if you really want the blue dot to be strong, this should be very low. Okay. Now it really looks like it's dark and I'm pointing a flashlight at something. So glowing is how uh, much light the material gives off by itself. Bright is just how bright the light is. So if I make that brighter, then the shadows are crisper, but it's also like lighting everything up, which is kind of boring. So if I make it not so bright, <coughs> it's eerie, right? Um, 
Shiny is how much light the surface reflects when it's reflecting light. Let, let me just turn that up a little bit. That was oof, very dark. Okay. Um, and for now, I'm going to turn it back down later because I'm, what I'm going to do next. Um, but shiny is just how we'll play with different ones. Do a really low one like that. Not very shiny surface. So it's kind of like carpet or velvet or something, right? Really, really shiny means it's like polished and it's really reflecting the light. So where the light's shiny, it's almost white. All right, so I'll keep shiny just at the default 0.5. Polished means how focal the shine is. So it starts at 27, let's just say four. Okay, so it's not very polished, which means the light is like scattered all over the place. Let's say like 90. And the light is all in one tiny spot. In fact, that's almost useless. So let's do like 50. I don't know if you can see the difference or not. So play with that on your own. We'll keep polished the normal spot. And I'm gonna say metallic. Okay, because the way that metals give off light is totally different. Um, so let's say that this is much shinier. Dunk. Okay, can you see what's happening up there? So it's, it's yeah, metallic changes all of these things so that they all do something different now. Um, you usually want the glow to be very low if you're going to do metallic. Um, and metallic is more useful if it's cropped out to this specific, well, anyway, it's hard to do good examples of metallic. So I'm actually just going to turn it off for mine. You feel free to play with it the way you want to. All right, lastly, you can add more than one light. So light two is none. I can say light two is another light. And then I can move that over to a different spot. So now I have two lights pointing there, which means I really don't want the lights to be very bright. That's why I had it lower earlier. I was trying to think ahead. Like, oh, that's that's probably too dark though. Uh, maybe just more. Okay, so there we go. Um, so whenever you feel like it looks cool, maybe you want the G to glow and the and the E to glow, go back to light one. I'll change that to be like the middle of the E. Let's see, okay. This one takes longer to apply because um, it has to calculate um, reflections and refractions and um, all sorts of other good stuff. But anyway, um, when you got that, save it, export it, upload it. Thanks for watching.